I mean, it's a relatively significant day if you're um, a media and entertainment analyst. Um, you know, Disney's uh, direct consumer video service, Disney Plus, uh, is launching in the USA. It's had a bit of a trial period in the Netherlands. And I mean, it's not just so much around, um, you know, yet another OTT subscription video launch. Um, but we're quite excited about it because of what it means for the broader um, future of, of TV and, and entertainment distribution as we know it. Um, you know, Disney Plus alongside, we, I think, you know, we could argue things like um, HBO Max, uh, NBC's Peacock, um, have all emerged as a result of, you know, some what we're seeing in some declines in um, the US pay TV market. Um, essentially, these large organizations, these large corporations are making the bet that they can compensate for the longer term declines in pay TV and linear TV viewing in commercial broadcast um, by launching their own proprietary direct consumer video services. Um, and from a starting point of zero, obviously, this is going to be a multi-year process. But this, this is what it's all about, pivoting away from what we would broadly describe as traditional TV. So obviously, to do this, you know, you, you can't just, um, it's not a business in just one or two countries. So this is very much a, a global bet. Uh, we know that Disney Plus will be um, in a number of other markets by the end of quarter one next year. They certainly announced um, the key European markets, UK, Germany. Uh, it's already in the Netherlands as a result of the free trial period. Um, and I believe Spain and Italy are in there as well. And I think what's interesting about um, the Disney Plus launch in particular is I don't, you know, it's very difficult to put into something quantitative if you're an analyst. But um, around the sort of the broad question of, you know, who has the best content, who has the most appealing content, who has the shows and the movies, um, which appeal to both younger and older audiences, um, not just in English speaking demographics, uh, English speaking markets. And, you know, the, the, you know, certainly one of the strongest answers that and pretty much anyone would come up with across both, um, you know, cinema and TV, um, as well as the associated um, merchandising uh, lines and even s extending into uh, the physical realm through a very, very well-established global um, store network, theme parks, and even into cruises in North America. Um, that's obviously Disney. So other companies may have, equ you know, comparably impressive depth of catalog. Perhaps they addressed certain segments um, in a more successful or a more capable way. But I think when we think about Disney, if we think about some of the um, some of the big sort of content stories that they've got coming to Disney Plus, there's a number of interesting things. I think one of them would be, first of all, it's very obvious that uh, Disney, as an entire corporation, is very much focusing all of its strengths on Disney Plus. You know, shows which um, might previously have been made for a TV channel or even for a, a, a cinematic release um, will now prioritize Disney Plus as as the launch platform. You know, Disney Plus will be very much, um, you know, the single destination from which you'll be able to watch um, the most comprehensive selection of Disney content. So there are some huge IPs in there. Of course, there's, um, there's, uh, there's going to be Star Wars shows. There's going to be shows based on the Marvel comic book IP. Um, and there are going to be, um, there's going to be movies from the core Disney studio label as well. Uh, and you know, we know that there are things such as um, Frozen 2, which will be huge both at the box office uh, and in OTT video. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of content. Um, and what we've seen from, I think, the free trial period in the Netherlands, from what Disney have talked about publicly, is um, well, firstly, I think the pricing strategy is pretty notable at 6.99 a month. Um, you know, this is very much at the lower end of what these very um, sort of generalist, uh, if you like, mass mass audience, mass entertainment type platforms, such as Netflix, obviously, um, Amazon, Hulu Plus uh, are charging. I think the other things that we think are interesting about Disney Plus's launch strategy is, um, first of all, that for, I think, around twelve ninety nine a month, you can get a bundle including Disney Plus, um, ESPN Plus and uh, Hulu Plus in the United States, which is a pretty strong um, 
a pretty strong value proposition uh, that also taps into, I think, around 28 million Hulu subscribers and around 3.5 million ESPN Plus subscribers um, in the US who would obviously be healthy targets for um, an upsell to a Disney Plus subscription. And um, Disney Plus has also confirmed that it will be uh, working with the mobile operator Verizon, offering a free 12 months of access to the Disney Plus service to all Verizon subscribers who are on um, a higher tier data plan. So it's always quite difficult to really understand how many new subscribers um, will be delivered to Disney Plus through such a service. It's um, a forecasting problem we're working through right now. Um, you know, we think there are probably around 50 million um, unlimited data subs who would qualify for Disney Plus access uh, through the Verizon deal. Probably around half of those are going to be business customers, so that leaves around 25 million. Uh, no one converts perfectly, so it's a matter of um, it's a matter of making. Uh, and a, a series of assumptions regarding how many of those somewhere between uh, obviously naught at the bottom end and 25 million at the high and how many of those will actually turn into paying subscribers at the end of the 12 month period and this approach to building um, subscriber volume very very quickly through a deal with a mobile operator like a Verizon I mean this isn't anything new uh, T-Mobile's um, been very successful with this Netflix on us promotion um, over the, since 2017, um, and uh, we also know, of course, that for HBO Max, um, Warner Brothers or HBO's effort to kind of really compete head to head with you know the giants of online subscription video, um, that will be, that will offer a free 12 month trial period to all existing HBO subscribers who are. Um, who either received their HBO subscription through um, one of AT&T's pay TV outlets, um, which of notably Direct TV, or if you're an AT&T mobile subscriber, um, you will also receive that promotion. So very, very quickly, um, you know, we can see like extended periods, periods more than just the one month sort of standard trial period, um, being offered to tens of millions of um, US subscribers from day one, you know, this is this is very much in the effort to try to scale their subscriber base as quickly as possible um, and to start competing with the likes of Netflix and Amazon. I think um, when we think about Disney's internal expectations for Disney Plus, I think they've stated they want around 60 to 90 million subscribers uh, by 2025, end of 2024. Which, um, you know, certainly if you're, you know, you're looking to just straight line it um, and you're going to rely predominantly on acquiring uh, subscribers directly without the help of distribution partners, certainly looks like a very, very ambitious um, target. But once you start to factor in um, a reasonable volume of subscribers coming from the on-ramp of the Verizon um, subscriber base, it, it starts to look more feasible. Another big variable factor um, within that target, and I think you know HBO Max has a has an equally um, ambitious target somewhere. I, I, it's literally, I think, somewhere in the same region, around fifty to seventy million in around twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five. Um, you know, these targets, given how um, how many people already subscribe to another OTT service in the US, uh, given the level of penetration of existing services of OTT service in the, you know, these, 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 these targets do, do look very, very, do look relatively ambitious. Um, and, and a lot is going to depend on the distribution partners that these video services uh, work with. And, you know, it doesn't have to be an external distribution partner. You know, we thought a lot already about Apple TV Plus's launch. Um, and Apple TV Plus is on ramp through um, offering 12 months free to all purchasers of a new Apple device, which includes handsets, uh, tablets, and obviously the Apple TV streaming box. This is somewhere uh, in the region of 180 million to 200 million device purchases a year um, will also be offered uh, free 12 months to Apple TV. Um, you know, if 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 Apple can convert even a fraction of that um, enormous volume of device sales on an annual basis, then um, you know the, the 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 growth numbers for Apple TV Plus will be um, spectacular. So obviously, these new services they they do pose a, a pretty a pretty stern sort of sizing and forecasting. Um, 
challenge, if you like, for our for our combined analyst teams. Uh, we've we've what we've cho- you know we we are obviously um, looking very carefully at the impact on our existing forecasts. We have also um, decided just to pull together all of the existing forecasting work on these new direct to consumer platforms. You know, namely Disney Plus, HBO Max, um, NBC's Peacock. Uh, Katzenberg and Meg Whitman's uh, mobile video startup, Quibi, um, and perhaps a handful of others thinking about perhaps Discovery's D-Play, um, if we can get enough um, if we can get enough interesting data points. But we're pulling all of that forecasting work and all of the analysis around the go-to-market strategies of these direct-to-consumer platforms, the content strategies of these direct-to-consumer platforms, um, our initial forecasts, and um, you know our thoughts on how this will impact um, the broader, I think, pay TV in particular, um, but also the entire visual entertainment uh, ecosystem. I mean, I think it's it's one of the, um, you know, the launch of all these platforms constitutes one of the most significant events um, for 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 a good few years in in media and entertainment, possibly even um, for about a decade if we go back to when Netflix really started scaling. Um, so uh, the, the the focus and the condensation of all this work will be um, in a report on direct consumer platforms, which we'll be publishing uh, in December of this year.